Frau Ministerin. Ja, vielen Dank. Thank you very much. A very warm welcome. Welcome to you, Jens, here for our second meeting in the Bendler block. When we last met a few weeks ago in January, the security situation was a completely different one. During that time, we had to see that Russia has launched a brutal war of aggression in Ukraine. We see that there is immense suffering among the population and millions need to leave their home to find a safe haven also in Germany and in Germany there's a great willingness to host these refugees and I think that's an important message but another important message and I'd like to thank you especially for that that we in NATO uh, over recent weeks we were able to have such a united position and we showed that we are standing by our allies no ifs, no buts. And any attack on the alliance territory would be met with the respective response. Therefore, it was really good that we responded so quickly and we reinforced our troops at the eastern flank. Germany contributed to that by reinforcing forces in Lithuania, by increasing our contribution, doubling our contribution in Romania Romania in air policing and now we have the parliamentary approval from Slovakia and we will get engaged there too. So those are important signs that we are standing by each other as allies in this more than difficult time. It was an important sign also here in Germany that as a result of the degraded situation, as a result of the attack by uh, Putin, we have taken certain important decisions. We have agreed to supply weapons to Ukraine. That was not an easy decision. Until the very last moment, we tried to um, avoid this conflict by diplomatic means. But when we saw that there was nothing but lies, and when we saw Putin acting with such violence, we knew that we had to review our approach and draw the consequences from the events. One of the consequences is that we are now supplying weapons to Ukraine, we are, or equipment to Ukraine, we're supporting them. And another important decision was that as a result of the threat situation, we decided to invest more in future in national and collective defense, and therefore we we have adopted a special fund worth uh, 100 um, billion euro, uh, some that we've never had before, for investments in the Bundeswehr. It is necessary to have the sum to catch up what has been, uh, what has not been done in recent years because we had so many savings, and it's really necessary so that we can do what we've committed to do, to contribute and um, do what we have pledged. We are reliable partners in that, but our Bundeswehr needs to have the right equipment to live up to that pledge. Last time I was not yet able to send you this message when we last met, but now I can. Germany is a reliable partner in NATO. Germany is a reliable partner for our allies. Minister Lambrecht and uh, Christina, it's great to be back here and to meet uh, with uh, you so shortly after we met uh, uh, yesterday at uh, a NATO Defence Ministerial meeting and as you said we met here also in uh, January. Uh, I'm very grateful for your strong personal commitment to our transatlantic alliance. Uh, German leadership is vital as we face this dangerous moment for European security. President Putin's brutal uh, war in Ukraine continues and the bravery of the Ukrainian uh, people and their armed forces are an inspiration for the whole world. We support their right uh, to self-defense as enshrined in the UN Charter. Germany is playing a key role with military equipment, financial and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. And I'm extremely grateful for the rapid response 
from Germany in providing support to Ukraine. Allies are imposing unprecedented costs on Russia and sanctions are hurting Putin's ability to wage war. Germany is also stepping up to help protect and defend other NATO allies. Uh, you quickly sent hundreds of uh, more troops to the NATO battle group you lead in Lithuania. You have deployed um, Eurofighters to Romania and actually met uh, German pilots there when I visited Romania uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Germany has deployed Patriot air defense systems in Slovakia and German warships uh, have been on patrol for NATO in the uh, Baltic Sea. All of this is uh, part of NATO's immediate response to the crisis. And yesterday uh, we met in Brussels to address the changes we must make for the longer term. To reset our deterrence and defence for a new reality, we will require more defence investment. Germany is already uh, leading the way. The announcement of 100 billion euro investment fund for defence is uh, impressive. And increasing uh, German um, uh, defence spending to more than 2%. Uh, starting this year, will have a significant um, impact for peace and security in uh, Europe. Helping make uh, Germany and our whole alliance uh, uh, even more secure. Your investment in fifth generation aircraft will also be vital for NATO and it reaffirms Germany's commitment to our nuclear deterrence uh, mission. These are the right decisions because we cannot take peace and security for granted. Now is the time uh, to invest in our armed forces, increase our readiness and modernize our capabilities to keep our people safe. I look forward to discussing uh, 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 with uh, Germany in the coming weeks and months how we can make sure that we adapt uh, NATO uh, to uh, this uh, a new security uh, 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 reality. So once again, uh, uh, Minister Lambrecht, it's always a great pleasure to meet you and thank you for your strong commitment to NATO. Thank you. Herr Hoffmann. Minister Lambrecht, Secretary General, I've got a question to both of you. Regarding considerations to station more permanently um, soldiers and equipment with the Eastern Allies, what does that mean for Germany? What expectations do you have in Germany? And the Ukrainian President Zelensky uh, spoke very impressively today in the German Parliament asking for more support. What's your response to that? Well, in the current situation, we responded very quickly, both as NATO and as Germany, in order to strengthen the security at the eastern flank and of our allies. And it was the right thing to act so quickly. Now we are talking about how we can ensure that in the mid and long term, because we need to expect a security situation that is not going to be over within a few weeks' time. And if we, we now need to think about the infrastructure we need, the kind of um, capabilities and capacities, that's what we need to talk about. And the first position paper is on the table. And I'd like to thank you, Jens, for having started to discuss that. Over the next few weeks, we will discuss it more uh, so that in the summer we can take the necessary decisions on it. The speech by President Zelensky in the German Parliament um, was very concerning. It, um, it showed uh, the situation that people in Ukraine live in, and you know we. It, we are here in Germany, and at the same time, there are bomb alerts, and there's a terrible situation in Ukraine. And so we must act, and we do that. We, we are supporting Ukraine, and we will continue to do that. But we will not necessarily talk about it in detail 
publicly because we want to ensure that what we deliver arrives where it is needed, where it is so urgently needed, and we want to ensure that those who deliver the equipment do not become a target. We want to ensure that they have the highest level of safety that is possible in such a situation. So the Ukraine can rely on us continuing to be a good partner when it comes to equipment and support, but also in terms of humanitarian aid, in terms of uh, helping the I can just, pe um, those people. Uh, 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 support and agree with what uh, Minister Lambrecht just uh, said. Let me just add that um, uh, when it comes to NATO presence in the eastern part of the alliance, uh, we have to uh, distinguish between uh, our immediate response, which has already been implemented. We have significantly increased uh, the presence of uh, uh, NATO troops uh, in the east on, the, on land and also uh, uh, more ships at sea and, and more planes in the air. Um, and uh, uh, what we see now is that we have hundreds of thousands of troops on heightened alert across the lines. Uh, we have uh, 100,000 U.S. forces in uh, Europe now, which is a, uh, an increase of several thousands just over the last uh, weeks. And then we have 40,000 uh, troops in the direct uh, NATO command, most of them in the eastern part of the alliance. And then you have, of course, like Germany doubling the number of um, uh, troops in the, the battle group uh, Germany leads in Lithuania. So this is our immediate response, and we will uh, adjust that if needed. Uh, but uh, uh, as the minister said, we have also started now the discussion at NATO to a, a more longer term reset of our deterrence and defense. And uh, we have not made the decisions, but we have asked our military commanders for advice. Uh, we will receive that in, in some weeks. Based on that, we will have the political the consultations and then finally decisions uh, in uh, NATO in June. Uh, but I expect that to be about both more presence in the East, but also uh, more uh, capabilities like, for instance, air defense and other capabilities, which we think are critical uh, to convey a clear message to Moscow that we are there to protect and defend uh, all uh, allies. So this is a process, and I'm extremely grateful for the support and the constructive approach uh, from uh, Minister Lambrecht and from the uh, German uh, government. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Thank you.